what is good guys it's ray j back with another video and in this one i'm going to be talking about the spy the qqq the indices and many different stocks out there break down what's going on with the inflationary data that came out what data is coming out for tomorrow and also what's happening for friday that will affect the markets i'm also going to break down what the technicals are telling us as well and why this is going to be very very important for the markets going forward and before i break anything down about this before i get into any more details i do have to mention a couple of things before starting Firstly, I'm not a financial planner. Make sure you take none of this as financial advice whatsoever. And also, if you guys can, please smash the like button if you want to see more videos like this. It not only benefits me, it benefits the entire community as a whole. And the last thing is, if you guys can, please check out the Weeble link down below and into the description. If you sign up for Weeble, the link down below and deposit any amount of money into the account, whether it's $1 or $100, it's up to you. You're guaranteed up to 12 free stocks, each worth up to $3,000. And the best part is any could be a free Tesla share. It's a limited time offer. The offer ends in just five days. Check it out before they run out. Once again, guys, now let's actually talk about the market, what's actually going on. SPY was down 0.41%. We had a very mixed reaction to CPI. I did warn you guys about this. And CPI was very close to what I actually predicted it to be on both CPI and also core. I told you guys core would likely be hot and CPI would likely be very close to expectations, if not a little bit higher. I, I, that was just my view. And I was almost completely right about that. And my reaction to that was we'd see a big move. We did see crazy volatility. We gapped up into open, had a fake breakout followed by this big drop right near open when we dropped we actually came very close to filling the gap that formed we ended up not doing so and then we got another bounce this was a fake a fake bounce actually the bounce happened right here a fake bounce into open we came down pushed up and then finally the fomc minutes came we got some bearish news the market just continued to drop after that so I want to break down what actually happened with the data, what this means for the future, and now what the technicals are telling us. But first, let's talk about CPI just briefly. CPI has been on a downtrend, sure, but like I said before, this is not necessarily great because it's still very high, and all this tells us is the rate at which prices are increasing. So prices are still increasing, just that the rate at which they're increasing is slowing down. Now, here's the thing about this. For the first time... For the entire last 12 months, we saw core CPI actually end up getting higher than the overall CPI, which is not actually a good sign whatsoever. Because the Fed, they don't have too much control over food and energy. They don't control it too much. So they like to look at core CPI. They like to prioritize that. Because once again, it gives them a better gauge of what inflation is actually like if you exclude energy. Now, in this case, just based off the data alone, I'm not going to say it's right or wrong, but just based off the data, energy went down, and I think a lot of food prices went down as well for the month of March, particularly energy as well. And what happened was because energy went down, right, CPI got inflated, it got deflated in a way, right? It, it basically came down. But if you exclude it, this would actually go up. Now, what does this mean for the future? Well, the Fed, in their eyes, energy is the only reason why CPI slowed down, which means if you exclude it, core CPI is hot, the Fed has to continue to raise rates and maintain a more hawkish stance. On top of all of that, you have to consider what's happening with the macroeconomics right now and geopolitics, excuse me, because right now, OPEC Plus, for many different reasons, are going to likely start cutting production which means oil prices and energy are going to start going up most likely by the summertime. So what's going to happen to this you know, inflationary data when energy starts going up or if it starts going up by the summertime? Right? The odds do favor that as of right now. This could change depending on production and other factors, but as of right now, the data is suggesting we're likely going to see another uptick by the summertime, especially as we get closer to May and June. That could be very bearish for the markets. But I'm not promising it. I'm just saying right now, it seems that way. And the Fed knows this. This is why the Fed is going to be very, very cautious. And I do believe another rate hike is coming, at least 25 basis points. Then they might pause after that. But does that mean the market will just explode and rally? Not necessarily, because it's going to depend on other factors. Now, one other thing that happened after the FOMC minutes came out was some Fed speakers wanted a 50 basis point rate hike during the last FOMC meeting. 
Other ones wanted the Fed to pause, but the majority of them were actually in a consensus where the Fed would just continue to slow down on the rates and be very careful and help out the banking system. But there were other Fed staff and Fed officials who are now saying a mild recession is likely. So this is a very, very big shift in sentiment. It's very dynamic. This is very important because now the Fed is telling us, or at least some of the speakers, it's not necessarily Jerome Powell that said this, but other members are now saying a recession is now likely coming. So it's a very, very big shift from the whole soft landing narrative they kept on throwing at us. And now some Fed speakers are now admitting to the fact that we should be entering a recession as the large majority of indicators are suggesting it. And we're most likely going to see it based off the shift in demand right now. This is very important stuff because this could affect the markets big time as well. And recessionary fears could actually cause the market to start pricing in a lot of things and even tank pretty hard. Now, I also want to note that for tomorrow and Friday, we have very important data coming out. For Thursday, all right, we have the PPI report coming out. This is just like CPI except from the producer side. This is going to be very important. We want the numbers to be low. The expectation is about 3.2% uh, for PPI and 3.5% for core. We want PPI to go down. Also, initial jobless claims is coming out. The forecast is 238,000. We want this to be hot. We want lots of jobless claims. We really want this. We want initial jobless claims as well to be hot. We want pain in the job sector, and we want lower inflation. That's going to help the market bump. If that does not happen, then things could change big time. Now, I also want to note that this is just based off like what the information is telling us and also based off what typically happens. The market is also very manipulated and I do believe a lot of shorts are continuing to pile in. So they will try to manipulate the stocks regardless. But as of right now, I'm just going to stand by what I'm saying. And you have to remember that Thursday is the big data day, massive data from jobless claims to PPI. And for Friday, we have some exports data, industrials and other things like that, which are not as big. We do have a couple of Fed speakers. I think we have Waller speaking. Uh, nothing too crazy on Friday on the data side, but you have to remember, I'm warning you right now, for Friday, we have some massive earnings coming out. We have JP Morgan Chase, Citi, Wells Fargo, PNC, BlackRock. Massive banks are going to be giving us earnings on Friday before the market opens. Make sure you are ready because if the market does try to bounce tomorrow, that does not mean too much. If bank earnings come out and they're horrible, this could actually cause panic in the stock market for friday max pain on spy is 406 we also have about 600,000 puts expiring that does not matter as much if the news trumps uh the manipulation by the market makers we'll just have to wait and see how that goes though anyways now let's talk about the charts what on earth is going on i want to inform everyone that i can predict tomorrow as well because it's going to depend heavily on initial jobless claims and ppi that's coming out but i can tell you one thing and that is whether we try to get another pump and then dump or whether we're done with the pumping and this thing is just ready to tank, no matter what, the odds are favoring downside in the markets. Okay, I'm seeing some very bearish signals developing. If you look at the chart, and let me make this a little bigger so you can see it. If you look at the chart, look at the, the tops right here. You can see we made a higher high right here on SPY. A higher high was made right here. We went up. But look at the MACD. Look at the RSI. We have this divergence. We have multiple divergences forming, which tends to be bearish. Now, there's no guarantee that the divergence is ready to cause a crash or the market tanking too hard just yet. Uh, we did actually hold 408. We did close above it. We didn't hold it, actually. We did drop a little bit below it, but we did end up closing above it. So the question is, the really important support is going to be 406. If we break below that, that's going to turn very bearish. Uh, for the time being, we'll see how this goes. It is possible for us to try to bounce a little bit and retest 409 to 410. I think that's very possible tomorrow with PPI coming out. It's likely not going to be too horrible. CPI was not that horrible, but like I said, there's still an increase in core CPI, so that's not what's good about it. Uh, I'm not too sure about exactly how tomorrow will go. I'm thinking we might get a rebound, a retest of 409 to 410. But if we fail to break this high right here, if we fail to get above these higher levels, this negative divergence is still developing it's still valid and then even if we do try to pump higher what if this is still valid it won't mean anything as long as this is still existent and that tells me we're most likely going to see downside coming
And what else is suspicious is this, this bearish development from the technical side is coming right before the bank earnings, right before earnings season starts. I find that very suspicious. And also, here's another crazy thing. Let me just close my drawings. Look at the daily chart on SPY. This is insane. Remember how I was showing you guys that, yes, we did have this like inverse head and shoulders right here, and it did play out, and I was talking about how the market was pumping. And now when you look at it, we had this, hopefully you guys can see this, we had this head and shoulders developing on SPY. We have this left shoulder, the head, the right shoulder. It's somewhat slanted. I think the neckline is a little bit slanted right here. And then the shoulders are also slanted. And then right where the right shoulder is, we're getting these sell signals. We're getting these bearish signals as if we're going to start dropping. So then the question is, what on earth would invalidate this head and shoulders? So far, we don't have anything to invalidate it. It's still valid. It's very valid, especially if we start rejecting off this high. It's forming a perfect right shoulder. Just like how this left shoulder formed, the right shoulder looks like it's forming. To invalidate it, we have to break the high of the head. And we failed to do so so far, and we're getting those sell signals. Also, if you look at the MACD, it looks like this is kind of lagging a bit, but it's it's looking like we're about to get a crossover. It's getting weaker and weaker. SPY is struggling to break above 412. It, it hits 412, then it just gets rejected. And we have this negative divergence. So overall, it's looking more bearish. It looks more bearish than bullish. Now, I'm not saying about tomorrow. I don't know what PPI is going to bring. We could try to bounce a little bit. Like I said, retest 410 to 409. But if it fails, if it fails... We could be validating this head and shoulders, which is very bearish. On top of that, the VIX is very undervalued. It could bounce very soon. We have these gaps down here on SPY. There are gaps in the 400s, the 390s, the 380s. There's one gap there, and there's another one in the 370s. There's one all the way down in the 370s, I remember, right here. It's a little hard to see. There's one right about here. There's so many gaps that are unfilled on SPY. So I do see potential for downside. It will depend on the data, though, so we have to be open-minded. But I just want to note that the odds are starting to favor downside coming. Uh, I'm not saying this just for tomorrow. I'm just talking about the overall trend. The dollar is still not breaking out too strongly. It's still a little bit undervalued. And that this could be because of the fact that the dollar is still continuing to lose value. Uh, we'll see if the dollar gets this crossover and tries to break above 101. So far, it's still stabilizing. But if this thing does get a break on one day, that could mark the top for SPY or even a big reversal, a big uh, move to the downside. For Tesla, in my opinion, what I was thinking was maybe Tesla will continue to downtrend. Uh, we do have this gap down here. I don't know if Tesla is going to fill this gap if it fails to hold 180. 176 is very strong support. But here's my point. Even if Tesla does cool off even more, tries to fill this gap, I won't be way too bearish because earnings is coming out in just one week, exactly one week from now. So it might get a rebound next week, and then it's going to react depending on what earnings gives us. If Tesla's margins are fine, if everything is fine, there is a chance Tesla could outperform the market and try to fill this gap up here. Or if Tesla just gets this, this huge rally next week and it, it tries to fill this gap, I'd still be very careful because earnings could be very, very capricious, especially because of all the price cuts. We have to be careful. For AMC, she's looking more bearish than bullish. She looks like she topped around 5.74. My target for AMC was around 5.78, very close. And now she's starting to downtrend. In my opinion, what I'm seeing is she might try to balance and try to get above 5.5. Other than that, she might start downtrending now, and we could see AMC try to fill this gap down here, or at least get closer to 5. It looks to me like the, the trend is now shifting in favor of the bears. NEO did exactly what I predicted. Let me show you what I'm talking about. I'm not, I'm not trying to lie when I say this. This is literally what, what I said. I told you guys. A clean, clear head and shoulders is developing. Left shoulder, head, right shoulder. What does this look like? It's It's almost perfect. And I was telling you, we'd likely get a nice bounce on Neo. I was pretty bullish on Neo. We got the bounce. Then I told you all to be very careful here because I told you, you know, we, we, we validated this head and shoulders. Now, I told you some downside could likely come for Neo. We might retest the neckline and come back down to nine. That is what happened. And then I told you all, there's some downside potential for this now. Uh, based off these uh, signals and based off 
this right here. We're not actually forming a divergence, but to me personally, it could try to bounce off nine temporarily, but overall, I do believe NEO is going to come down to fill this gap into the 8.75s and even drop a little lower in the future. Microsoft, it's still pretty flat. I did tell you guys that this thing has potential to try to fill this gap and then start bouncing. It came, it, it tried to do so, came all the way up to about 287, came a little bit short and then ended up rejecting. Now this is very mixed. It's going, going to depend heavily on PPI and the jobs data coming out for tomorrow. I do believe it might want to bounce a little bit, but it is trying to look very distributive. And you could argue that there is a possible like head and shoulders developing here now. This could be like the head, the left shoulder, and the right shoulder. And because it's now forming a distribution, if Microsoft does get a bounce, we're going to be watching where it rejects. Could it fill the gap? I'm not too sure about that. And if it does reject, how are we going to hold 280? If 280 fails, right, going into the next few weeks, there's the gap down here to 280 flat. And then there's another big gap down here in the 275 area. There's likely more downside to come for this. If, if we truly are in a topping process, we do have two gaps above though. So once again, I'm very mixed on this because of the fact that PPI is coming out. Once again, I can't predict that perfectly. Uh, it could try to bounce a little bit. We do have this indecision count that formed. But overall, I just think it's going to trade sideways for a while. And eventually, if the market does start tanking off the bank earnings, that could drag Microsoft down. We'll just have to wait and see how that goes. The QQQ, in my opinion, is looking weaker than before big time. Uh, it's been chopping a bit, but it's actually downtrending. Uh, we got this bounce. I told you all this thing would likely bounce. I was hoping this thing could try to like touch 320 and then reject. We got stopped around 318. And now it's starting to actually give us some more distrib distributive signals, which tells me that right now the QQQ might continue to downtrend, might try to balance and retest the 50 EMA on the daily, this 315 area. Then it might end up failing over the next couple of days and fill this gap down here around 307. The odds are starting to favor that. It's starting to look weaker by the minutes. So make sure you're very careful with this. If it fails, the important area to watch is around this 310 area. It has to hold 310 or so. If it fails, we could get a retest of the 200 EMA, and that, that could basically lead us to the gap fill around this 307 going even lower. So we have to make sure this 310 area holds. If it fails, this thing is going to come down even harder. For the VIX, the VIX is... I mean, it did technically go lower. It actually hit 18.28. It's at some very extreme lows. If it's actually going to break out soon, it likely will, in my opinion, over the next week or so. Uh, it is starting to actually curl right here on the MACD. And I'm not seeing a divergence as of right now. Actually, I think there is a divergence that formed. The, the RSI was around 41. Then the RSI hit 44. So the VIX has a bullish divergence forming, right? Uh, the RSI was lower. The RSI is going up. The price went lower. We made a lower low right here. And yet, you know, right here, the daily RSI did show some signs of some bullish momentum. Let's check this out on the daily chart. I'm not really seeing it on, not the daily, the hourly. I'm not really seeing it as of right now. I am seeing it right here, though. Because right here, we actually made a lower low on the VIX. Right? The VIX went a little lower, but the RSI is getting higher and hotter, which is forming a divergence, which tells me the VIX might start to break out in the next week, which means why is the VIX going to break out? Because the S&P 500 is likely going to come down soon. And I think maybe the bank earnings could cause it. Maybe it's going to be the bank earnings. Maybe earnings early next week will cause it. There could be some more downside coming. For Amazon, this is looking a little bit more bearish overall could try to bounce and retest 99 if it fails it could actually approach this 96.21 area might finish filling this gap and if that happens we're going to be watching 95 or so apple i'm just going to talk about apple in the video then end the video by the way for apple we're getting closer to filling this gap we're getting close to about gap support if apple breaks down it's going to fill this gap and come down to 157 if not lower if we break up, depending on PPI, we could fill this gap above, but it's looking less likely right now. Apple has earnings in a couple of weeks. I think in about two to three weeks, they have earnings. 
that's going to affect how they move. But I just want to note that their sales have been down for the most part. So not looking too good for earnings. We'll see how it goes. For tomorrow, it's going to likely rebound and retest 161.99, maybe a little bit higher. And if it fails to break above this resistance, it's going to end up just failing and dropping. If it breaks the low of the day, then we're likely going to see this thing fill the gap and come down to 157, if not lower. Overall, yes, it's going to bounce most likely and then start coming down. Small bounce and maybe more downside. The odds are still favoring downside. AMD did almost exactly what I predicted. I told you all that AMD would likely reject off this 95 area and some more downside would likely come. If it failed at 90, then this thing would continue to downtrend from there. There's this gap down here in the 70s. Maybe over the next few weeks to a month and a half, it could end up getting filled. And last but not least, NVIDIA. Something not too good just formed on it. Uh, I was seeing it right here. This thing actually formed. This is actually forming like a head and shoulders right here. I remember I called this out. Uh, we also have a negative divergence. I remember seeing it. I'm going to have to double check where it is. I think right here, we actually formed a negative divergence. So right here, that's what marked the downside. It did pop a little bit. Overall, it's sitting on a very beautiful looking head and shoulders. It might try to bounce off 264. Maybe it tries to touch 268 and then it fails. And if it fails at 264, it's going to retest 25. I think that's 259.5 around that area. That's where it has some demand. And there's likely going to be more downside. If that ends up failing over the next few weeks, next few days, this thing is going to just tumble down. And it's going to continue to drop. Overall, it still is favoring the bears now. It looks like it's very overextended. And I do believe this thing is going to continue to drop. Retest the 200 EMA around 257 over the next few weeks. And it's looking more bearish than bullish with this clean head and shoulders developing. All right, guys. So thank you all so much for listening. The 10-year treasury yield is a little bit down. Uh, for the time being, I don't know if it's going to come down to fill this gap and then bounce. Or it might just keep going. Overall, it has a lot of gaps above. This thing is bound to start pushing up and filling some of these gaps, getting back closer to 40. If that happens soon, that's going to be bearish for the stock market. Anyways, thank you all for listening. I know I've made this video very long. The market's at the moon because the long term is still very bright. And peace out.